one last thing. I can't believe I didn't even mention this. At Lakeshore uh, 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 Hotel and Resort, we were waiting down there in that place I was telling you about before, Decoy. And uh, I was down there. I was at the bar. I was drinking coffee, delicious coffee. Next thing I know, I see a text. And it's Paulie Shores. And he's there uh, with Tom and Chris from Grace Band, a.k.a. the Scarf Guy and Elvis. And, and I'm like, when was this taken? And then I, I glance at it, and then I look over, and I see that Paulie's over there, and I see them, and I'm like, what the heck? This is crazy. And it just so happened that uh, they both just lived right up the street, and uh, they were there to, to see us play. I thought that was just so phenomenal. We'll be playing with Grace Band again at the Gas Lamp. So check it out. Look look at uh, YachtlyCrew.com, YachtRockBand.com if you want, you find, if you could find that information. Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Hey, I'm just recording this on my laptop listening to your podcast, and I can't believe you got Mickey Dolans from the Monkees on it. It's amazing. Let's uh, let's see here. 327. Today's the 22nd, August 22nd. The Atley Crew is playing over at um, what's called The Collection. It's kind of like uh, in a mall. You wouldn't expect to see a, a, such a large park at a um, mall like this. But sure enough, uh, we've played at a place called Copper Blues before, which is a part of this whole mall situation. And... Um, so it's uh, it's really interesting to be able to play another outdoor show for all the families. It's a rarity for us to play full shows for the families. I love it. It's a uh, it is a joy. It is a pleasure. And um, there are already a whole bunch of chairs. Um, lots of chairs and blankets set up outside. I guess uh, a whole bunch of people got out there early to go check stuff out. And sure enough, sure enough, due to, uh, oh, it's so funny. Look at this. Look at this. Rockstar starting to come out with more um, interesting names for their stuff. 300 milligrams caffeine. They call it cotton candy. Sounds a lot like, to me, the uh, rainbow unicorn. Bang energy. It's, it's funny when you see, when you, when you see uh, people, you know, sort of setting some kind of trend of sorts, and then you see other people go, oh, that's a good idea. You could, you could see, you could see how the gears were turning and how it all came about. Very, very intriguing. Excited to play today for the people. Apparently, the um, the uh, owners of Copper Blues want us to come by after this show tonight. However, we've got a very early show tomorrow. I think. Oh, that's the twenty fourth. Yeah, t- tomorrow is a different show. The twenty third is a different show. And then, uh, I think on the. 24th is when we're going to be on Good Morning San Diego, which is KUSI News. We're on that. It's so funny. As much as I, as much as I um, talk about not wanting watching the news, it's funny that we happen to be playing for a news show, so to speak. If you ever want to, you can hear my podcast of the time we spent at KUSI, Kusi. 
can hear that episode. It's out there. It's available to be heard. And, uh, yeah, you can hear how that went. We went all the way out to San Diego. They played us, they played us uh, on, on television. And then next thing I know, um, we, that night we ended up playing at uh, Music Box, I believe it was. Oh, I've lost my bearings. I've lost my bearings. Um, follow the park. Follow the park. Wherever that is, follow it. Follow it. What the heck? Have I lost my mind? Where is 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 my mind? Yeah. It's interesting, I'm noticing with these... um, with these uh, f- energy drinks, the ones that claim to not have sugar seem to be co- uh, concurrent with uh, with the drinks that have like 300 milligrams. There's a rock star that's I think 260. This is the first time I've seen a 300 rock star. 300 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, I drink so much coffee a day that, you know, 80 milligrams is not going to do it. (laughs) Oh, man. Listen to me, the caffeine expert. What do I know? What do I know? Who would have thought that coffee, caffeine, all that razzmatazz would have become the sought-after thing that that it has, huh? Oh, you can hear Tommy already tearing into his uh, guitar right now. Huh. Jeez, look at these. Seats are all over the place right now. If you could see this, there are seats all over. We'd love to see you today. I have a feeling that by the time you hear this, we will have already played. Oh, interesting. 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 I'm tasting this cotton candy uh, rock star right now. And there's a little bit of um, a chemical taste. It's interesting. Last time uh, I looked at one of these, it said no juice. That makes me wonder, okay, well, what's that liquid in there? What's that liquid? Makes you wonder. It's a very strange taste right away. Bam. And then an even more curious aftertaste. Wow, so interesting. Well, here we go. We'll talk more later. We're at Lakeside uh, Country Club today. This is the same place where we uh, did the Mario Lopez charity for St. Joseph's Hospital. We're supposed to be done in 10 minutes. Oh boy. We'll be back. We'll be back. I just had an idea. I've never ever heard of this one before. What about dubstep mariachi? Is that invented yet? And they are called the Yachtly Crew. So, let's meet the band members here Yachtly Crew. Your name is? Good morning. I'm Philly Ocean. Philly Ocean. All right. Let's get yeah, Everybody's got a name. Yeah. David Bowie. David Bowie. Baba Bowie. Sailor Hawkins. Everybody's got a name. <laughs> Stony Shores. Hi, Mom. Polly Shores. And 
and I'm Tommy Bowie. Tommy Bowie. All right. How long have you guys been playing together? We've been together for about two and a half years now. And are you all from San Diego, or? We're actually all from the L.A. area. Uh-huh. Uh, we are loving what we're doing, and we're getting to play nationally now, but we do come to San Diego quite often. As a matter of fact, we're playing today at the Lake House Resort at about 6 o'clock. Come on out, grab your captain's hats and your sailor outfits and join us. It's going to be incredible. It's in San Marcos. Well, you guys are really blowing up, too. What made you decide about on Yacht Rockets? You know? Well, we got to pay credit where credit is due. Baba Bowie and Sailor Hawkins came up uh, with the idea. They got this captain over here, <laughs> Mr. David Bowie, on board, and then they set sail to find the rest of their crew. And uh, we've been playing for about two and a half years now, all over Southern California. And how you decide on which songs you're gonna? It's '70s and '80s genre, right? Pretty much, Sailor uh, Hawkins calls the shots on those. Is that no, right? We, we we all we all uh, come up with ideas. We grew up on this music. We love this music. So we're always adding new uh, material to our repertoire. We play uh, over, I think, almost 80 songs in our repertoire now, and we're constantly. Every set is a new set. Every time we play is all new material. And do you guys just decide as you go. Is there a set list, or you're just like, hey, let's play this order? Uh, well, we have to we have to get it right because these songs are iconic. So we work really, really hard and really diligently at making sure every note is as close to the record as possible. Because um, if you don't, the audience is going to they're going to know. These are very they're going to know. Songs. I mean, Tommy Bowie nails every single solo. <laughs> Sailor Hawkins nails every fill. Baba Bowie gets all the bass lines, and, and of course, the evil Knievel of Yacht Rock here, there we go. Mr. Paulie Shores. <laughs> Careless Whisper, you know. So nice. People know these songs. We have to, we have to uh, pay tribute to them. All right, what are you going to play for us right now? Right now we're going to play a song back from 1978. 1978! By the group Ace called How Long. How Long? Great Let's song. do it, Baba. We just got done playing KUSI. Good morning, San Diego. And uh, we had a lot of fun. We played about four songs on there. And right after that, we headed straight up here to San Marcos, where we're going to be playing at this place called Lake House, which is quite interesting because just yesterday we played Lakeside Country Club. And at Lakeside Country Club, they had a wine named Decoy. They had a wine tasting contest. It was very duck-oriented. I show up to this place. There's a duck on the front of this building, and it says Decoy written up on the building. So we go from Lakeside to Lake House. How interesting is that? It is now the 25th. Today is Sunday. Uh, we just had our uh, yeah, the cruise show yesterday. It was phenomenal. I love, love, I love it. I love the All Ages show. I've said it so many times before, and I'll say it again. I love the All Ages shows. It is incredible to see these parents bringing their kids. So I woke up. I just woke up from a dream, and uh, my something happened where my phone apparently got wet, and I decided to put it into like a a, an oven, like a toaster oven. And I, I put it in there to dry it off, to warm it up, dry it off. It's, it's some cannot remember what happened. Something happened uh, that, you know, kind of took my attention away. And when I came back, like, I really uh oh, my phone is in the toaster. What's gonna happen? And then, it, sure enough, I took a closer look, and there in the toaster was my toasted phone, all crispy, very crispy, and uh, just charred. I, I I was so devastated, so devastated. I started scrambling, thinking, how am I going to get all those phone numbers again? What am I going to do? Uh, 
how many cell phone dreams do you have? How many, how many times do you dream of losing your phone, dropping it in water, any number of things? There are other dreams where I fall into a pool. I'm walking along and then somehow I just fall into a pool with my cell phone in my pocket. And as one can imagine, I, I get very, very upset. I get very upset forgetting and not even realizing that I'm in a dream. I'd love to hear your horror stories. Give me a call. Call the voicemail, 561-203-9179-er. And uh, leave it on there. Leave a message. I'll put it on the broadcast. You can also email me your audio. I would say email me about three minutes or so. I'll put it on this podcast, or I'll put it on to the radio show. So... Email me, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. And without further ado, uh, check out this interesting voice message. Mm. This is Nick Nolte again. Mm. Sorry, I just followed a maraschino cherry pit. <clears throat> okay, listen, um, 72 hours, right? You had 48 hours. Eddie Murphy, Nick Nolte, the great Nick Nolte, and Eddie, Eddie was okay. <clears throat> and you had another 48 hours, and we got it done. But now, the, the next one, I, I don't know, 72 hours. Why not? What, what can you not do in 72 hours? You know, we find the bad guys, we put them in jail, we have a good time, we have some laughs. 96 hours. We're going to need 90, 96 hours. That'll, that, that'll work. Uh, I got a call off there, Hill. Thank you, Inspirato Projecto. A friend of mine a few years back read the autobiography Waging Heavy Peace by Neil Young. He heard the audiobook and he said, Kurt, you you must read this book. And so about a week ago, I finally got this book and I'm reading through this and I want to read to you some very interesting things here. This is on page 36. Um, you'll, you'll, okay, here we go. <clears throat> so basically what he's talking about here is he's talking to his manager, Elliot, or his, his friend who helps him out with certain things. We live through every deal together, every project. I'm harder and harder for him to deal with as I get older and more certain of my opinions on business matters, but he still protects me from others and tries in vain to protect me from myself. I will do anything to get started on something. I will use my own money when I shouldn't, just because I hate waiting. That may be why I have spent so much money and built so many things. I just like to do it myself. I hate waiting for approval because I have my own approve-o-meter. It works like a charm. I put in the money to do it myself and do whatever I need to do to get the money. Promise that I will deliver a record and get advances. Anything I can do to get the cash to make something happen the way I envision it. So I get into a lot of trouble, though I also get a lot of things done. I did it with, with Shaky Pictures, Human Highway, Greendale, the Link Volt movie in progress, the Pure Tone videos in progress, Journey Through the Past, my first film, the Link Volt Construction and Development, 
the Lionel Trainmaster Command Control Development, the Lionel Rail Sounds Development, the Lionel Legacy Control System Development, and probably some others I've forgotten. None of these things would have happened if I hadn't done them myself. No one believes in my ideas until I actually do them. I'm never able to get backing for anything I want to do other than records because I'm the only one with money who believes in them. And I don't do them to make money. I'm entrepreneurial. I do them because I can see it before it happens. That is the good, the bad, and the ugly all rolled up in one big ball. Mostly now, though, Elliot is unable to save me from my, is able to save me from myself. As I said, he's a true friend and also one of the funniest people on the planet. We have at least one disagreement a day. Whatever deal he gets, I ask him for more, and he mostly he gets more. I've learned that taking less is not that good. It's not the money. It's the respect and the money. We have to have control. We fight for a tooth and nail. My father-in-law, T.A. Morton, Peggy's dad, lived by the 51% rule. You need that much for control. I've tried to be true to that, but some ideas are just too big for me to carry by myself. I hate the fact that the pure tone idea is probably going to get out of my absolute control one day. I hate waiting for other people to okay what I want to do. Ideas are the driver. There's nothing worse than having a great idea and losing it because you can't control the process. Working with me must be hell under those circumstances. I don't feel bad about it, though. I know. I work well with people who want to get things done. Now, there there are some golden nuggets in there uh, of what he just said. Believing in your idea. Believing in your own idea. You know, it's so funny. Um... I remember hearing about how George Lucas funded... Oh, I didn't know you were outside. Hi, little guy. George Lucas funded Star Wars Episode Episode 1 with his own money. Now, we always hear that this phrase, get others to put money into it. You know, don't, don't, don't use your own money. And I think, well, if you have the money and you believe in the idea, wouldn't... Wouldn't that be worth the gamble, so to speak? See, if we're not able to co-sign on our own ideas and put our own money, if we have it towards our own ideas, and we don't, you know, we don't trust it, well then, how can we expect someone else to put money into it if we ourselves are worried about taking the gamble? That's, that's so interesting to me. Yes, many people didn't like episode one by George Lucas. Yes, many people did like episode one by George Lucas. The point here is the fact that he had the money, he believed in the vision, and bam, there it is. He put out, he put it out. I think if we're willing enough to express an idea uh, to others to get them excited and involved in this thing and, and, and to try to use their money for it, well, then why wouldn't we... Why, why wouldn't we, put, you know, put our own resources into it if we can? I love that idea. He likes to work with people who are, who likes to get things done. Sometimes, you know, my patience is something that I, I struggle with a lot of the times because I want to get the thing done now. Every, you know, we, we all got these, these kinds of things. It's crazy when you see if when you have a vision and you see exactly how it could unfold and you know that it could just be awesome if only the, your fellow collaborator collaborators co-signed on the idea and said yeah 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 let's let's you know let's do that. This is why if this is you know this is why things like anchor this podcast medium here are so kick ass you get to do it yourself and you get to do it for free. You don't have to put your own resources into this stuff. Now more than ever, artists get to make whatever the hell they want to make, however they want to make it, with the materials they already got in their hands. Uh, everybody's got a, a, a video camera, so to speak. They got it on their cell phone. You can make a movie. You want to make an album? Well, there's another thing. Go to your cell phone. Pull out the GarageBand app. 
make it make a make a make a song whoever is telling you that you absolutely need all of this m- very expensive equipment to do this stuff they're they're basically a lot of these folks are recycling things that they heard other people say and a lot of those folks who are recycling that information themselves haven't even put f- a, a foot forward in in creating their own ideas I always get a kick out of seeing what kind of projects those people would create. Anybody can anybody can sit on the couch and tell you what to do, what not to do. That's that's great. Congratulations. But who are we going to respect the opinion of more? The person sitting on the couch who doesn't actually <laughs> who doesn't actually experiment with their own life or apply these principles. Uh, do we listen to that person? Do we listen to the people who are out there in the field? actually experimenting themselves or do we listen to our own hearts because we have been successful in experimenting with our own ideas the clo- the more we keep experimenting with our own ideas and we co-sign on our ideas and we go you know what i don't need anyone to do this particular idea i don't need anyone to do that particular idea i want to write a book i write a book here's a self-publishing company bam well it's distributed out it goes i wrote a book there you go make an album okay here's a guitar if i don't have a guitar here's this app that's got a series of 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 uh, instruments that are already recorded in there okay cool i got an oboe here here's a clarinet here are some violins let's throw those into a song there are some drum beats i i encourage i encourage anyone who happens to be listening to this please if you got ideas and and you don't need a team of people to do this or even if you got even just one person who likes to create with you well man create it create it create it make things sculpt things into action you'd be surprised there are a lot more people out there who've got resources that want to be able to use this stuff um than you'd imagine. There are a lot of people out there who got great equipment, and they've just, they're just waiting for a team of people to work together. A lot of people who are willing to donate their time to to help create a vision. You know, it's the stuff that we're most excited about, and um, and uh, associate with, and have have a a resonance with. Those are the things that we're going to put ourselves into it's a dream it's a thing that's pulling us and i just want to encourage encourage you to to share your ideas with us share your stuff with us i can't tell you. i i i i know quite a few people out there who are phenomenal writers and they've got all of these short stories they've got all of these poet all these poems they've got you know, all of, all of these great ideas, all this stuff, and it's just built up. It's just all built up. And I go, well, what if you were just to release it? Why don't you put, just put it out there? Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't reached the point yet that I need to be. Well, if that's the attitude, you're actually never going to reach that point because that means that you're, gonna, <laughs> that you're not going to respect the ideas or the information that's coming to you right now. You're always going to be waiting for later, well then, who's 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 your approval approval meter, as uh, as Neil Young says? Who is who's in charge of the approval meter? Who are you giving that control up to? Who are you who are you waiting for the pat on the back from? Would it help you if if David Lynch gave you a pat on the back and go, okay, now go forward and and create that idea? Would that help you? Would that be better? Would you rather get a pat on your back from one of your favorite politicians, one of your favorite sports people, one of your... I mean, what, 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 who is that? Who is the approver? Who's the approver of the approval meter of your art form? And how do you feel about that? That's the other question. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about waiting around for someone else to give you approval? Do you like that? Is that a good feeling? It's not a good feeling to me. It's not a good feeling to me. I've been a part of projects out there where the leaders of these projects were so overanalytical, so self-critical on their own decisions and constantly changing their mind and constantly 
you know, basically taking a shit upon their previous ideas to go, no, that's not bad. That's and you're going, whoa, I totally co-signed on that idea. I totally thought we were moving forward with this. Here's all of this, you know, envisioning I have done here to help you out here. And now you're going to completely scrap all that stuff. Um, because you overanalyzed it. See, when you start creating your own stuff, how you want to create it, we no longer have to blame lack of progress uh, of, of a project on someone else. We no longer have that luxury, which is a beautiful luxury to have. <laughs> it's, it's the best luxury to have. It's the best luxury to have. Because when you know that you stick by your own word, you follow through your promises, you go, here's an idea, here's something I'd like to see happen, and you st stick by your word, and you follow through with that, oh my God, it feels so sweet. That victory is so sweet. Many of you out there right now are following your passions. You're going out there, you're making it happen. Remember this, folks. No matter what, you're always going to progress in the chosen field that you are exploring. You will always progress. You will always learn more. And by embracing what you know now with what you have, and, and moving forward with that, that means that, you, that means that you stand by every moment, every idea that you got going on. You go, you know what? Yeah, I co-sign on that. I co-sign on that. Well, that album was an epic failure. Okay, well, according to who? I don't feel it was a failure. It was the, exactly the vision I had. Who, who am I expecting approval from? You, Rolling Stone music critic? Am I, am I expecting approval from you? <laughs> I, I mean, does this sound ridiculous or not? To put the life of your projects in, into someone else's hands. Does that not sound ridiculous? You got everything you need right now. I bet you there's probably a pen or a pencil somewhere nearby you. I bet you there's some scrap of paper nearby. Guess what? You're an artist. Go start drawing. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And then make a book out of it. Scan it. Do that every day. Draw something. Scribble something. Call it doodling. Whatever you want. That's a funny thing. That's a funny thing. My buddy Andy Smith and I would talk about this all the time. We'd, we, would, we would talk with people. They go, oh, I can't draw. Oh, God, I draw stick figures. Okay, good. Then draw stick figures. <laughs> draw what you know. Uh... The, no one is going to, you know, there's like this, this some, some idea that if we want to get into playing guitar or some kind of instrument or something or, or art or whatnot, that, that we've got to be that Jimi Hendrix level, that we've got to be that uh, Vincent Van Gogh level. Well, we will not reach that because that's their level. In fact, it's... <laughs> It's not something to climb to. It's not necessarily something to get to. It's, it's, it's a realm that was created unto itself from those particular visions. And you have the same thing. You are the same thing. So, you're probably already, already doing it. You're already doing it, aren't you? You're doing it right now. There are, there are, um, there are essential items to get ideas moving forward. I would say an essential item is the amount of excitement that's put into that idea. That's the energy that's powering this thing. There's a pendulum. There's a, there's a, there's a momentum. There's a movement that's happening. The tipping point that gets reached well that tipping point why does it tip because something is being whoosh, pushed on the other side something is going moving it over moving it so just 
Keep exploring those ideas. Keep putting it out there. It makes a huge difference. Two, depending on what kind of people you're hanging out with. And I know I've said this before, and you probably all know this yourself. There are a lot of great places out there for you to, to, to find those golden nuggets. I feel like that's what a lot of life is. It's us walking through, sifting through, sifting through what doesn't resonate with us, sifting through what doesn't inspire us, sifting through what is not adding value and enabling us to, to grow and feel enriched as this, as this being in the earthling skin. Uh, giving, giving appreciation to your vision is huge. How many people thought Nikolai Tesla was a freaking insane maniac? How many people thought Salvador Dali and or still think Salvador Dali is an insane maniac? Do you think in this day and age that those, those guys would probably end up in a mental institution? Or do you think that they would be allowed to roam free? This is how we sift through it. Look for meetups. You know, there are meetups. There are Facebook groups. There are a plethora, a multitude of, like, just, just, just go to an open mic night sometime. Go to, uh, go to where, what's your interest? Is your interest motorcycles? And the people that are around you right now are just, they're just, you know, they don't appreciate your vision and how you want to build this particular motorcycle. Well, find those who are conducive to that, who help give life to that. That has, that, that excitement is a big deal. That excitement is, that's a big deal. Um, it starts in the psychology of feeling whether we deserve or are worthy of such a tribe of, of, of uh, people who co-sign, you know, who co-sign on our ideas and enable us to be the best versions of ourselves. That's ultimately the thing. <laughs> is is connecting with people who want to see one another become the best versions of themselves and do what they can to help dial in more and more of that magic. Did you imagine how quick that evolution takes place? I've experienced it. I hope that you who are listening has experienced it. You had to have. There's at least one moment in your life where you really felt, oh my gosh, I nailed it. Okay, look at those things in your brain. Those times where you really felt satisfied. Um, what were the elements of that equation? What were, what were the things that really made you feel good? Was it the idea that you had a vision and you followed through and you went, wow. Imagine this. Imagine this. Let's say there was, uh, let's, uh, so the Olympics. Let's say someone, someone trains, trains so hard for this thing. The gold winner in any of these events, are they doing this because they want the recognition from people all over the world? The fact that this, that they ran this dash in a particular amount of time or they pole vaulted over this thing really high or is, do, do they want, is it the, is it the recognition of that? Is it the desire just to have that gold medal, just to have it? Or, or is it the idea that you challenged yourself so much that you actually pulled through what you envisioned? Is it, all, is it all those? 
Just imagine, just imagine right now, let's say someone just right now gives you a, an Olympic gold medal and it's for pole vaulting or the, uh, what is that crazy thing? The, uh, <laughs> there's that thing that they do. It looks like they got brooms or something and they're pushing around like a hockey puck kind of thing. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is. Uh, so let's say you won a gold medal for that. Okay, so so that's a that's a, that's a, that's a big deal for a lot of folks. You know, that's a that's a big deal. People people shoot for that. They really want to have that gold medal for that that particular event. Let's say right now someone gave it to you. Someone gave you the gold medal of recognition. Would you appreciate that? <laughs> Half as much as uh, as the person who's actually training for that. It's interesting how the value, how the value systems uh, kind of shift depending on what perspective is looking at it. And knowing that, what's so beautiful is that since since value is really truly, as they say, in the eye of the beholder, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, you're the beholder. You're already beholding it. <laughs> you're already beholding it. You're the beholder. You're the beholder. How cool is that? Doesn't that feel nice? Doesn't that feel nice knowing that you are the beholder? You get to choose what kind of value system you want to place on a thing. And and you get to choose how you then react to that thing. Boy, I mean, it's, it's truly amazing. Please... You know, share your stories with me about these about these times where you you had this vision and you followed through with it. Um, share share with me your ideas. Share with me the, your excitement of the tribes that you've been able to connect with, the tribes who um, encourage one another, appreciate one another's company. You know, are 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 aiming to. To, to create visions together and co-sign on each other's ideas. Send me those stories. I love those stories. You can call the hotline. Call the hotline. Leave it on the voicemail. Eight, uh, uh, five, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. I got to sing it. It's 561203 er You know, it's so funny. I had to put that into a song. Once I put that into a song, I could remember it. And it's funny because who was I talking to? I was talking to someone oh gosh, I was talking to someone who said, oh that's what it was that's what it was we did a a, a look up house in the middle of nowhere its acronym is HITMON, H-I-T-M-O-N this is a a movie project I'm getting involved with and we're doing a crowdfunding thing for it. Um, and so we went in there, this is a couple days ago, we went in there and we co- recorded a video for this. I think it's on Instagram. And we recorded a video for it. And this, uh, one of the girls there, her name is Brittany Belt. She was in uh, Black Pumpkin, which who knows when that movie will come out. However, that's where I met this, this gal. And uh, we're playing siblings in this movie. And, sh- and so for the script that we had to do for, for, for the crowdfunding thing, she was telling me that she memorized the whole thing. And there was like this whole list. There's a special effects guy that we're working with. And he has worked on tons of movies. So we wanted to make the list obnoxiously long. And so she said she memorized the whole list. I said, how the heck did you do that? She said, I put it into a song. And I said, that is amazing. She said, yeah, there, it's been said that if you attach a song, like, you know, Mar- the song Mary Had a Little Lamb, if you, if you attach, if you, when you're trying to memorize something and you do it in the Mary Had a Little Lamb kind of thing, that's, the, it's like, it, it attaches to it in such a way you somehow make a song and that's the, that's the spice that, that glues it together. So it's funny, I didn't even realize that, that that's what I did to memorize the hotline phone number, put it into a song. Five, six, one, 
203-903-9179-er. Call it up. Leave a voice message. Let me know about your greatness. <laughs> Let me know about the, 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 the thoughts that you're excited about, the ideas that you're excited about, the projects that you followed through with, the wonderful people that you're collaborating with. The enjoyment that you get out of each other's company and the resonance, the, that, that enlightening resonance that happens between them. And call me up on the hotline. 561-203-9179 or leave it on the voicemail. You can also email me, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. You can send it into there as well. And um, I'll, I'll talk about it in the podcast you can even uh, leave me a message. Leave me a message on there. Send me your audio scapes. All right, folks. I'll talk to you later. Take care and keep the inspirado flowing. Oh, and oh. Uh. I was just thinking about the making of movies. Uh, there was a commercial that popped up on YouTube here of Rambo Last Blood. And I was thinking, wow, you know, if let, let's say, for instance, when the day comes where I have funding to make Max Neptune uh, stretch it into a series or a series of movies, I would, I, you know, if I love living in that world and I have a, a steady stream of income, holy matrimony, I'd be creating all the time, creating all the time. And uh, so I was just sitting there thinking each time that you sculpt your own movie. So for instance, so Sylvester Stallone has been working on Rambo, you know, for eons. And it's what, you know, made him who, who he is today. It's all thanks to that, which is so kick-ass when you think about that. You just keep riding upon this energy. You just keep that momentum going and then parlaying it into the other tentacles of the other projects that you want to work on. Uh, I've heard he's a painter. Uh, who knows? He might make music. Uh, who knows? Someday some crazy archives of information are going to be popping out, uh, uh, piping, popping out from all these various uh, uh, musicians and or actors and whatnot through the years. Who knows? Maybe there's, maybe there's some, some, um, uh, some painter out there who has actually conduct, you know, uh, uh, con- not conducted, uh, composed an orchestra that they're just waiting to see out there in the, in, in, in the world. So I was just sitting there thinking, okay, so with each project, you get to learn more and more and more. You get to wrap your brain around things. This is, this is in parallel with what I'm doing here with Kapow and trying to get the schedule down, um, which I should probably doing, be doing instead of podcasting too, but I think this is very important for me to say my thoughts out loud in order for me to – I need to be able to hear them said out loud so I can go, okay, there it is. It's like the mirror. Um, that's why the spell casting is so, so important when we w- – the words we're putting out there in the world, which I got to keep – keep my brain wrapped around that idea because that will just keep enabling more and more greatness. So hearing myself say say it out loud that there are things that I will need to know for future kapow scheduling situations. I'm wondering, okay, is two hour blocks the best thing I can do? Should we just, or is it, do I do a series of half, one and a half hour blocks? Some of these blocks are going to be an hour. Some are going to be one ten or one twenty minutes. I mean, should I feel all that pressure? There are still more days to go. There's still movies to fill in. So is this going to become one of those? I, I, and you know what? And I'm not going to even going to put it out there. I'm not even going to put it out there. But I just had this funny idea of, you know, when kids do it, I still do it. You see kids and they're, they're writing across a poster. It, it happened to the gal with the cue cards the other day with the uh, uh, house in the middle of the nowhere uh, uh, video that we, we put together. If you check out house in the middle of nowhere Instagram, you'll see... Uh, a little piece of what I'm talking about here. But the cue card girl, she started writing and, and she's like, uh-oh, you know, am I going to be able to fit it on the on the edge of the thing? Because sometimes there's that tendency where you start squishing it down near the end. You think, oh, okay, we got all this space. And then you go, oh, eh. So I'm trying to figure out how to evenly distribute this thing without without losing my brain. I'm trying to, I'm, I, I, this is really a test in, in, in figuring out stress levels and, oh my gosh, you know, Poor Dave Uchansky. I, I get tense every time he calls me because I'm, I'm like, ah! And I'm sitting here thinking, holy cow, Kurt, what are you preaching to people? You're preaching to people about appreciating the process. You're preaching to people about 
Letting it in, letting it in. That's the act of improvisation. Being willing to drop what you're doing at that moment and go with the next thing. I'm talking about going with the flow all the time. Am I doing it all the time? No, and I'm not. This is why I'm saying it out loud because I need to hear myself say it out loud and to know that I'm accountable to you. That you're actually listening to what I'm saying. You're, you're taking this to heart and going, yep, I recognize that. And yep, he's a hypocrite. And yep, he needs to work on that better. And yep, I need to work on it better. And yep, I can associate with that. And yep, I've been applying this. Yep, I'm doing a better job at it than he is. <laughs> I mean, all those things. Uh, but ideally, you know, if we're looking at each other like <laughs> perspectives of one another, I have to keep reminding myself that infinite patience idea. Oh, man, the infinite patience, infinite patience, infinite patience, infinite patience. At the grocery store, infinite patience. Walking down the sidewalk, people walking slow in front of you, infinite patience. Walking in a certain direction and someone else walks in that direction, and then you stop dead in your tracks or you slow down. Oh, man, infinite patience, infinite patience, infinite patience. So it's not feeling that pressure of the, oh, you know, I'm drowning in it. The more calm and relaxed, the easier you can think about it. So I, there's all this stuff. I'm not required to eat the whole buffet all at once. I'm only required to eat a bit by bit. I'm allowed to be flexible with this. I'm allowed, you know, I th it's so funny because I equate in my brain the amount of effort and the time and the, and, and, and the torture I put my own self through in trying to figure out the, the denouement. You know, this is like I'm trying to look at each of these blocks like it's a mixtape. Like back in the day, I loved making the mixtapes. Oh, man. There's a wonderful discussion about it in High Fidelity. And man, it perf perfectly explains it. There's a certain behavior that's attached, a certain mood, a feeling with each of those mixtapes. I'd love to throw samples in there. I love This is basically an extension of the mixtape. <laughs> I just, I, I cannot believe I never realized this before until right now. Thank you so much for just letting me talk this out. The epiphany. Bam! Yeah. This is a mixtape. Inspirato Projecto is a mixtape. It's a living mixtape. It's a living, <laughs> morphing, shape-shifting uh, uh, mixtape that just keeps on going and going and going and going and going and going and going, going. Is this an alternate reality game? Am I just making this all up? Am I just an improv actor? Yes. Is this all just a game? Am I just playing a character? Yes. I'm putting the reality into your hands. Do half of these synchronicities exist? Yes or no? It all depends. From this perspective, yes, absolutely. I've experienced it. I've seen it. It's happened. I pass it on. I love it when you share it. I get so excited when you share it with me. My bandmates, are, uh, Yachtly Crew, they're sharing it more, sharing it more with me. People are sharing them with me. They must like seeing me lose my mind. Lose my marbles, as one says. Lose your marbles. I'm wondering if maybe the person who invented lose your marbles is a manufacturer of vending machines. Marble, marble vending machines. Because I'm imagining that thing falling over. I lost my marbles. What do you what do you what do you what do you equate with that? The losing your marbles. You flip out. The thing is glass. Bam, broke. Bam. There goes all the marbles. I just lost my marbles. And then someone watching that goes, that man just lost his marbles. And then that becomes an inside joke and people spread it. He just lost his marbles. We are making up lingo language within Yachtly Crew all the time. Do not be uh uh uh, uh do not be surprised, K N O T. Should we come out with the poetry book? The Atli Crew Poetry. Poems. Poems to swim by. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is great. Wow. Poems to swim by. I love it. I love it. Wow. This is coming at me full force. Okay. So I'll put out the call to croupies, my only Atley crew me band members. This is what we'll do. First be the band members. Then the next book will be putting it out to 
the croupies and the band members. <clears throat> Huh. Wow. That'd be fun. I just imagined, like, what if there was a Yachtly Crew Patreon? So that you would get the book. You'd get the download of the book. The e-book. You could also order it on Amazon. But you'd get a free download of the book. Or, you know, being a Patreon, a subscription. Dollar a month subscription. Doesn't even have to be a month. A dollar for... No, eight. Wait, three, maybe. I'm trying to think of like the best number for a wave and yet also symbolically... Well, there are seven of us. Seven dollar book. We'll see. We'll see how much we, how, sm how, I would love it if it were just a small pocketbook. Oh my God. Just, okay. This is a reminder of myself. I'm going to do, uh, you know, look on Lulu, create space, smallest book you possibly can put out. <clears throat> that will be it. That will be it. Hmm. Wow. That would be fun. QR codes to scan, or maybe you get special videos that are hidden in secret sections on the Yachtly Cruise site. Whoa. Buttons? Buttons? We could call it the, uh, the lifesaver? Or the life vest? Or the... Yeah, the... The, uh, lifesaver. And what it is, it could be the cruisy, uh, the cru, the, 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 yeah, the cruisy, the, uh, button, guitar pick, t-shirt, book of poems, e-gads, a hat, aviators, I mean, gosh, you know, imagine that, once we get, hmm, that would be cool. Revo is our sponsor. If I could talk to Revo about that, that that would be fun. I gotta, I gotta just remember this, okay? Remind, remind me re to remember this. Remind me to remember this. Call five six one two zero three nine one seven nine or call me. Remind me on the voicemail on the hotline. You can also email me, insproudoprojecto at gmail .com. We will talk to you later, and please keep the synchronicities flowing. Hey, Kurt, this is Richard Wilson from Mad Shelley Films, and we have a message for you. This, this is Mad Shelley Films, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto Radio.